Today is a special show. We're talking about Break the Chains. And I'd like to introduce uh, Josephine Lee and Zijan Ning uh, from Break the Chains Alliance. And uh, welcome today. Uh, Hi. Hello, Mike. Thank you for having us. Uh, no problem. Uh, I, first, before we get into too much uh, detail, I'd like to show a uh, at least part of a brief video that Zijan had done. Bear with me a second. Our borders are out of control. Lawless chaos. We've always defined ourselves as a nation of immigrants. This economy could not function without them. Undocumented workers broke our immigration laws. The jobs they hold might otherwise be held by citizens. The public service they use impose burdens on our taxpayers. They must be held accountable. The United States government's immigration agenda has been one of fear and control. We are proposing an immigration plan that will ensure their swift deportation. But at the same time, threats of raids and deportations are being sensationalized, further keeping undocumented immigrants in the shadows. For all of us who sincerely want to resolve the problem, we need to ask, what's the root cause and how do we deal with it? In 1986, with bipartisan support, President Reagan passed the biggest immigration reform to date, the Immigration Reform and Control Act, or IRCA. IRCA has three significant components. Amnesty for those who came before 1982, an arbitrary cutoff point that made those who came afterwards illegal. Strengthening border security, a rhetoric repeated by all his successors, that only make undocumented immigrants feel more at risk of getting caught. But the most hideous is the employer sanctions provision. With regard to the employer sanctions, this we must have. We need to hold employers to account for the workers they hire. Contrary to what Reagan and his successors claim, employer sanctions has done the exact opposite. Instead of punishing bad employers, the law makes it illegal for undocumented workers to make a living. We'll enforce our immigration laws at the work site and give employers the tools to verify the legal status of their workers. So there's no excuse left for violating the law. And we're implementing and improving a system to give employers a reliable way to verify that their employees are here legally. With this tool to check the worker's immigration status, the employers essentially become patrols over undocumented workers forcing them to work as cheap labor and face deportation when they speak out against the working conditions. Many employers hire people who they know are undocumented because employers can then exploit workers and then once workers, uh, the workers who are seen as troublemakers because they're challenging the non-payment of wages or challenging uh, violations of safety, then the employer can always check on your authorization to work as a way to basically shut down any kind of organizing or any kind of complaints and protests. Consequently, employer sanctions serves to deprive the rights and create an underclass of labor and empower unscrupulous bosses, including Donald Trump. There's a lot of forces that want undocumented labor, pretend that they don't want it, or, or maybe convince us that you know we're supposed to fight each other and fight them. But in the back door, they're more than happy to have undocumented workers because they're more vulnerable for exploitation, for hyper-exploitation. The bosses, they know uh, we are undocumented. Citizen worker, American worker, passing by looking for a job, the boss say, oh, leave your information, fill it up this form, and we, we call you back. But immigrant passing by, and the boss ask, you have a social security? He say, yes, but not a good one. And he say, okay, no, no problem. Come to work tomorrow. AFL-CIO, America's biggest union federation, supported IRCA back in the 80s, saying it would protect American workers. But over the years, the law backfired and hurt the American workers even more. IRCA basically divided the working class against each other, making union organizing really difficult. Within the building and construction trades, there are a lot of people who feel that their jobs are being threatened. And that tends to come from what we're seeing in the, the growth of non-union work. You know, a lot of the buildings that are going up used to be mostly union buildings, you know, with union workers. 
Um, but now there's, there's a lot of competition. Unionized trades feel very threatened by this. With workers fighting each other in the race to the bottom, it is no wonder that unions are unable to grow and working conditions in general are getting worse. The employers use employer sanctions against the workers and the workplaces that are most militant, like the ones that are organizing. With workplaces that are not organizing, well then usually the employers won't really check on your authorization to work. Employer sanctions is a major contributing factor to the decline of the labor movement in the United States. It is a chain that separates us and locks us from fighting against exploitation together for our common interest. Workers just end up blaming each other for having to compete against one another versus seeing that we're being, we're, we're being pitted against one another. Immigrant workers, we are super exploited, but conditions come down for citizen workers too. Do we still allow ourselves to be chained? Or instead, come together to break the chains that keeps us down? If we come together, we can repeal employer sanctions to organize for better conditions for every worker. The only way out of this is for workers to come together and for people to be able to demand that all workers should have the equal right to organize. All workers need the ability to organize and to fight for the conditions that they deserve better. We deserve better. Across the country, more and more people are ready to stand up against the criminalization of immigrants, demand the right to organize for all workers, and fight to repeal employer sanctions. For we know that's the only way for us to unite as working people. It is the key to fight divisiveness, improve working conditions, and advance as a society that works for the majority, not the richest 1%. Are you ready to join our call? Would the two of you like to go in more detail about the video that we, we just saw? Uh, so the video uh, talk about how the, um, the, the government, right, um, uh, uh, has been responsible in, the, you know, dividing the people, right? And uh, like, you know, you, you can, you know, you have seen a lot of discrimination going on, uh, a lot of like, um, you know, anti-immigrant sentiments going on. Uh, and um, you know, a lot of people would attribute to the uh, you know the the attitude, right? Saying, oh yeah, you know, they discriminate against, they they're being yelled at, you know, um, or different things. Um, but it's it's you know essentially it's actually what the government has been uh, trying to do uh, to divide the working people, right? So that the um, uh, undocumented workers um, uh, have been uh, subject to uh, you know discrimination uh, because of the. Uh, uh, government uh, making them uh, uh, criminals, you know, making them criminals uh, to to work. Uh, so you know that's what the video has been uh, trying to explain uh, from the Reagan time, uh, where he uh, implemented this uh, um, uh, part of the immigration reform is uh, the employer sanctions uh, that uh, criminalize undocumented workers uh, for working. So and uh, and he also gave power to the bosses uh, to uh, to patrol these immigrants. Uh, so. Uh, giving so letting them uh, check the immigration status of the workers uh, as a way to uh, threaten them. You know that, that they have they have to accept uh, 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 lower working conditions. Uh, so that way to pit uh, the undocumented workers uh, against the documented workers and citizens. So that's the way to you know really create uh, this kind of uh, division. You know among people. Josephine, you'd like to comment. Yeah, so we both work with, you know, both undocumented and um, documented workers. And what we hear a lot from people and, you know, I've witnessed myself, I used to work in a restaurant, is that usually employers, when you tell them that um, you are uh, documented, actually employers would prefer to hire undocumented workers who they can um, who they can pay uh, less money right? Um, they don't have any recourse under the law. And then it ends up creating divisions among um, documented and undocumented workers. And so uh, Break the Chains is trying to bridge this divide so that um, and expose how the employer sanctions law under the Immigration Reform and Control Act 
um, help to create these division and allows employers um, to super exploit undocumented workers. Uh, now, Zijan and I have worked on some projects locally, things like uh, uh, NIA Women Program, where uh, healthcare workers are being affected. And it seems to be that the undocumented people that are working in those positions, again, are being uh, treated most poorly. Uh, with this campaign, uh, how are you uh, getting out to a uh, media that really hasn't been representative of the people that have been uh, talking about uh, broadcasting all of the things that we just saw in the video from the presidents and the government, but we're not talking from the people's point of view. Yeah, actually, you'll see in the... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Josephine. Go ahead. Uh, so you'll see in the media, actually in the New York Times and the Washington Post, um, they actually support strengthening employer sanctions. Um, their argument is that uh, the country needs more, um, needs more slaves, that uh, the uh, undocumented workers do the work that Americans don't want to do. And by pushing this argument, it actually divides uh, workers even more because there's an assumption that um, immigrant workers, they uh, want to be in this position. So actually the mainstream media says that um, while they support uh, amnesty, they do not support the repeal of employer sanctions. Um, and so a lot of even the mainstream media's um, per perspectives are pretty divisive. Mm -hmm. And Zizan, you were going to say something? Yeah, because uh, that's how the, you know, the in the in the U.S., uh, how the, the ruling class, you know, trying to uh, control the narrative, right? Uh, and you can see, like, the, the two party actually, you know, even though they might seem to taken, uh, be taken different positions, but essentially they're the same uh, to, to uh, maintain the exploitation. So while Trump, you know, uh, pretty much, uh, in, you know, uh, affront about uh, condemn, you know, about uh, shifting the blame to undocumented workers, we have seen, like, in, in New York City, uh, especially uh, with, like, you know, so called progressive uh, Mayor de Blasio. Uh, who, you know, brag himself of uh, protecting immigrants or, and uh, fighting for sanctuary cities. Uh, but that, in the end, actually, um, um, uh, you know, trying to maintain the same system because uh, now he's uh, getting all the undocumented workers in and then uh, try to force them uh, to work in very bad, you know, uh, working conditions. And he's also, you know, uh, working with big developers to displace uh, communities. So in the end, you know, when the undocumented workers come to New York City uh, to to try to find sanctuary, they actually end up, you know, being being, you know, exploited, you know, as uh, cheap labor uh, to help, you know, the help the system uh, uh, run. So in the end, you know, like you know, even though you know the Blasio's rhetoric is, you know, sounds very, you know, benevolent, right? Oh yeah, I love immigrant, you know. But like Josephine said earlier, right? They they pretty much just you know want want to have more slaves. So these kind of uh, narrative are very popular in the in the mainstream, and the mainstream of course they try to paint it as as uh, like a like a difference between the parties. But then uh, they they wouldn't say you know essentially actually these two parties are the same you know in trying to maintain the the uh, super exploitation you know of undocumented workers. Yeah, and uh, you know uh, what Mike uh, raised earlier about how we try to get get the word out. Um, you know, we try to use, you know, uh, organizing, you know, of many of, uh, you know, uh, many forms, right? Uh, but essentially, uh, what we try to do is to bring people together and see, you know, the common interest, let people recognize the common interest. Uh, like, for example, in uh, our, you know, like like what, you know, Mike, you, you raised earlier, right, about the home attendance. Um, actually, a lot of home attendants uh, are documented. So, yeah, I mean, many of them, you know, immigrants, uh, but they are documented. Uh, there are also undocumented uh, home attendants, uh, as, as we know. Uh, but you know whether documented or not, they actually uh, are both forced to work 24 hours, you know, 24 hour shifts, uh, and also the wage stamps, right? So yeah, you know, like 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 you know we said earlier, how the the employers you know use the immigration status to threaten them. Uh, so a lot of wage stamps you know happen in immigrant communities. But you know this, uh, you know this also happened in a lot of other communities too. Uh, but in order to solve the problem, you know uh, that you know people should uh, should overcome the division, right? Regardless of status, to come together 
uh, like in New York State, you know, we hold the government, uh, Governor Cuomo accountable, you know, for supporting the criminal bosses, uh, for stealing workers' wages. Uh, so this call, you know, we try to unify uh, workers of different statuses and also let them see the common interest. So, uh, so as a way to kind of break the break the division and break the kind of uh, you know prejudice, discrimination, you know, among the different groups, uh, so that they can come and come together, see the common interest to really you know uh, uh, fight the system, you know, that uh, that that uh, you know kind of uh, promote this division. One one of the things that I've always been thankful for is that I grew up in Brooklyn, in New York, uh, and found it to be a very diverse place. Uh, Living in, in Texas, though, uh, I know the uh, Latin community has a large uh, population, but what about the Asian community in, in uh, Texas? Uh, I know uh, mm -hmm. it must be difficult at times in a conservative state like Texas. Um, well, uh, contrary to a lot of belief, actually Houston is pretty international, so there is a huge Asian population and as well as um, many other ethnicities. But um, like we talked about before, it's still very, neighborhoods are very, very segregated. Um, and so there's already divisions occurring by zoning laws, but then there's also um, a lot of um, African-American and the Latino community live side by side um, in different communities and with Chinese as well. And we even see divisions that are happening between um, those groups in apartments. And so, you know, landlords renting out at a lower rate to a certain group than others. Um, and then the same in the workplace, a lot of uh, different ethnicities work side by side and the boss will usually use those divisions between ethnicities and between um, workers of different immigration status to um, divide them. And so that means like paying them different wages um, we have one case uh, where in the fast fashion industry, there's an intermediary um, groups and they will send clothes to other developing um, countries. And in th those workplaces, uh, we just found out that the employer goes through a contracting agency to hire undocumented workers, pays them less, um, doesn't pay them, doesn't help to report their taxes. But then at the same time, we fired all the documented workers um, who were paid just slightly more so that he can super exploit um, the undocumented workers there. So this is pretty common across many different industries in um, Houston as well as around the nation. Mm -hmm. uh, now, how large is the alliance? I mean, here you are in Texas and John is here in, in New York. Uh, are you in other cities across the country? Uh, yeah, so there's groups um, and individuals that are part of it in Oklahoma, in um, New Jersey, uh, in Arkansas. So it extends, but um, it actually at one point it was much uh, larger um, before Obama came into office. The Break the Chains Alliance actually started um, way before and we were working together to repeal employer sanctions. Um, but the um, but a lot of organizations and members um, pin too much hope on Obama and Obama's um, promise to reform the immigration system. And of course, you know, we see that he um, essentially pushed a lot of the same policies that his predecessor Bush did and actually even deported even more immigrants um, during his time. And so uh, right now our task is to um, kind of get this out a little bit more again. And I think now it really is the time um, to do that. Yeah, uh, yeah so Obama was a big disappointment to a large group of people. Um, so are you planning uh, demonstrations across the country or are they individual groups doing those? Or, uh, what's your approach to make this more public? So I think the, you know, uh, we um, mainly use this uh, as a platform to, uh, you know, um, uh, break it out and uh, to different groups. Uh, and of course the perspective itself, you know, it's uh, the main thing is to uh, bring the people together 
right? And then the um, employer sanction to repeal employer sanction uh, and also the equal rights uh, for all workers. Uh, you know, the right, you know, that includes the right to uh, organize. Uh, so that way, you know, um, you know, of course, uh, it fits you into different contexts, right? And uh, specific groups uh, in different uh, places uh, can also, you know, they have their own campaign, right? But then uh, we use this to put out a perspective so that, uh, you know, in organizing their own campaign, uh, they can also, you know, uh, bring in out this uh, perspective, right? Organizing uh, uh, you know, bring you know, um, uh, bridging the gap, you know, between the documented and undocumented workers, uh, and uh, we have seen like how it um, uh, really affect, like for example, in New York City, uh, in the different campaigns that we do, uh, like the anti-displacement, you know, like the the campaign I mentioned earlier, there's the uh, uh, push call to pass the sweat bill, um, and uh, and also uh, in B uh, before we have uh, cases. Uh, where you know uh, documented and undocumented workers uh, work side by side. Uh, so usually the boss, uh, of course, use the immigration status to try to pit them to, uh, against each other. Uh, and uh, because of the perspective, uh, we try to you know do the other way, right? You know that uh, they 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 have the common interests. They should come together. Uh, and then so so you know in in smaller campaign like you know in a single restaurant. Uh, that uh, we 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 are trying to do that, and you know, so a larger community wide campaign. Okay. Also, get the you know people to recognize that. Uh, so because uh, you know people like like you said you know at the beginning right they, they also uh, that to blame you know the 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 their coworker right or or them or the the other community member uh, for getting the resources right for doing the job and all of that but then. Now we really come together to hold the, the one who is really responsible, you know. For people get involved in uh, in the alliance. Well, we're encouraging a lot of local organizing. Um, our website is equalrightsforallworkers.org. And, you, you know, we're encouraging people to, you know, start their own chapters in their own cities, in their communities, on their campus and to connect with us in that way um, and to spread materials through there. So um, on our website, equalrightsforallworkers.org, there's a lot of information, but it's really going to have to happen through a lot of local organizing um, efforts. And so, uh, for example, right now, um, now is a great time because we see what's happening um, even now with the response to the COVID-19 pandemic, right, to the coronavirus pandemic, is that it's the response is revealing deep-seated inequalities that we have here um, in the U.S. already. And so, you know, this stimulus package that, you know, is being debated uh, right now in Congress, I believe it hasn't passed through the House yet, but um, it's allowing for, you know, $500 billion of bailout money, right, to corporations um, while uh, American workers just get crumbs. And how is this allowed to happen? It's because um, the government has divided working people against each other. And so we see that there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be excluded from any type of um, from the stimulus package or any government response, right? Uh, we work with a lot of undocumented workers. They can't get any relief. They've been laid off the job um, and they can't uh, file for unemployment. Um, and so the, this division is happening even in the response um, that we see to the coronavirus pandemic now. Right, the people that need it most are the people that are least, uh, least uh, you know, get at least the benefits. But uh, so, are uh, is there a training program for organizing that uh, you can help local chapters uh, get involved? Um, yeah, I mean, we will work with, or we do work with um, people who want to start local chapters in different cities, um, and so they just have to contact us um, through our website, which is Equal Rights for allworkers.org. And, you know, we've been, um, we've gotten some calls from like Ohio and other places, but yeah, we'll work with people to start local chapters on their campus and their communities. Um, I mean, it has to start local first, but that we unite around a common perspective to make sure that all workers um, do have equal rights to organize because 
if not, then um, basically all of our conditions um, suffer. I see that we've lost the Zon. Um, yes. I was hoping um, he'd, he'd be able to come back sooner. But yeah. uh, So I appreciate you taking the time and uh, I'll try to connect with Zijan uh, later. Um, but uh, we'll put all of your information down below in the video and uh, we'll be back. Uh, this is a project I like to continue with and we'll have some discussions uh, from some other workers and uh, see whether we can start to wake up some politicians to this. Okay, uh, just one last thing. If people do want to get involved, if they're in New York or Houston, I know that MMAS has a local effort. Um, they are calling for a disaster relief fund that would uh, go to all workers, um, regardless of their immigration status. Um, and so uh, you can find that petition on MMAS.org. Okay, um, but then um, here locally in Houston, Texas, we also do have a petition calling for disaster relief fund uh, for all workers. And that's at bit.ly um, slash Texas COVID-19 relief fund. And so that's our uh, local effort that's happening right now to push the government to be accountable to all workers, not just a few. Okay, great. I'll, I'll uh, make sure that goes in the box below as well. So again, I want to thank you for taking the time. And uh, if you have my information. If you want to get back to me and you have something else that you'd like to, to discuss, let me know. Okay, great. Thank you um, so much, Mike, for having us. Oh, thank you very much. I'm sorry much. we lost it, Jishong. <laughs> yeah, he'll be back. <laughs> okay, thank uh, you. Have a good day. All right. Bye. You too. Okay, bye-bye.